Maryland women's basketball team back in action in conference play coming up on Saturday. They'll take on the Ravens of Anderson. The women's basketball team losing their lone game last week. We're going to talk about that with head coach Janelle Iden. And Coach, uh, I always talk about progress with a team, and you're still very early in the season, and we take that into consideration. From your standpoint now, are you, are you seeing progression from game to game in not really from game one to game four or five, whatever it might be, but game by game? Um, yes, until last week, I, yeah. I guess. I, I, I'm kind of going to be hooked up on last week's game a little bit. But um, I saw progression during the Heidelberg game. Uh, the first quarter was not not good. And then uh, moving forward, the rest of the three quarters were good. Um, and really, for the most part, we've done well in a lot of quarters. And now breaking the game up by quarters and stuff and, and, and competing. Um, and and I saw progression during the tournament, and then last uh, Tuesday the wheels kind of fell off the yeah. cart. Explain when the wheels kind of fell off, because you have a couple of veteran players on this team and a couple of veteran guards that I, when I looked at the numbers turnover-wise, I was a little bit surprised by those numbers. What happened? Yeah, and, and I was too. Uh, I, we have played, I did play, you know, a crazy style and everything, but they've been playing it for three or four years, so mm -hmm. it's not like it's anything new. Um, we prepared for it. Um, so I was just as confused and baffled as well. Uh, when in practices, we were going against seven or eight players, had no issues, and then it was like something happened last yeah. week. Um, so I, I really don't have the answer, to be honest with you, about why we did not succeed and uh, take care of the ball better. And that, the, like you said, the veterans and the people have been playing. Um, you know, Casey even had a, some troubles, and Hannah had tr troubles, and um, just taking care of the ball better, uh, the leadership didn't, didn't step up. And, yeah. and they know it, too. I know yeah. they were very frustrated. They would make a bad pass and, like, you know, yeah. roll their eyes or get upset with themselves. And I was trying to keep them calm because I knew frustration come down with frustration is probably not going to equal anything positive. Yeah. Um, and it, it was just a, a crazy game, to say the least. Yeah, that is a always – I always considered it a fine line between – trying to motivate your basketball team but you also need to you know get on them a little bit sometimes how does your team respond to criticism knowing that if they continually make the mistakes that they shouldn't be making at this level how do they respond to it I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's 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 I'm still working on trying to figure out how to do it and I guess if I could rechange I didn't really go hard on them in that halftime last Tuesday um, but I did challenge them to play with more passion and stuff and I was really trying it and I don't know if that was actually negative because they were just trying so hard and it was going the opposite way yeah. um, and maybe I should have done a calm down approach instead um, but no to this point like and we've, we've had some talks in practice and stuff you got to understand criticism is a good thing we believe you have potential and that take it constructively it's not personal yeah. and uh, a lot of times I do think they take it the wrong way or don't interpret the meaning behind it a little yeah. bit so to this point uh, I don't know but it's a it's a process it's a growing it's it's teaching life skills that you know your boss and things someday are not probably going to sugarcoat everything yeah. you gotta you gotta respond to it in a positive manner do you ever use the line if I stop talking to you that's the point you ought to start worrying or yeah it's funny uh, my <laughs> assistant coach told him that yesterday right before <laughs> practice she, so she definitely made it made it known yesterday mm. like you got to understand that point. yeah yeah it, go back to the, the game last week and you'd said a little bit ago that sometimes they they'll make a turnover and you can kind of see the frustration in them do they have a difficult time putting a mistake behind them and knowing that the next play is the most important play some of them do yes yeah. and and they know it and we've been working on it and we talk about it and some specific individuals I t when I pull them out of game I'm like this is where you need to bounce back mm -hmm. um, we it's kind of cheesy. We have a bouncy ball in practice right now, and our managers throw them at them. If we think they're starting to get down and they're not bouncing back, we throw it at them and say, you got to pick it up. Right. Go. Um, so we're trying different tactics to get there. It's just, like I said, it's a process, and it's it's still early, I guess, in the season and still trying to you know overcome some of those hurdles right now. You know, I was uh, in, the, in the gym the other day, and you, I think you're about ready to have practice. You might have been right after the men's game, I believe. I'm not sure. But if you weren't, the good news is I saw some of your players in there working out. And we're talking about later on in the evening. That has to be encouraging knowing that they've got to put in some extra time if they're going to get better. Yeah. The one thing I won't question is if there's a will and want to be successful. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to actually make the action happen. Yeah. Um, we are – 
slogan for the year is commitment to the process and I'm trying to help them understand that. I did a lot of stuff over the summer and got a lot of great insight from a lot of different conferences and, and things, professional development that I went to and really focusing on other things that's within your control. Mm. Um, and we, we do a lot of things different this year. We do a pre and post practice talk, talk about what our goals are before the practice, what the practice plan looks like, what we're going to do to achieve some of our you know targets and stuff. And then after we reevaluate, did we do it? Um, and it's, I've been more frustrated that I feel like we say we didn't hit our target after practices. Mm. We, we've had some where we do well, and then we have a lot where we didn't hit any, and, and that's where I, I get frustrated, and they get frustrated about it. And I'm gonna, I talked to another coach down the hall yesterday about how I can be a more, put them in a better position to be more successful in achieving it, mm. a little bit more, not necessarily putting it all in their hands to achieve it, and I try to kind of coach that, because maybe it's a little bit, I need to help them get there yeah. to that point a little bit better. But, but I've known you for f several years. You don't put unrealistic goals ahead of them. I mean, no. I'm well, one of our goals is communication. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just communicating. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a goal that we haven't been hitting for, uh, honestly, over a week. Yeah. Um, and they know it, and they talk about it, and, and uh, it sucks, like, I can lead the horse to the you know trough, but I can't make them drink. And right. I, you know, I can. I, I tell them all the time, I don't want to make punishments. I don't want to say if you don't communicate, you got a towel push or whatever. Mm. I don't want to do that. I want them to just do it. But um, it, it sucks as a coach that you can't make them open their mouth and actually verbalize anything. Th and when you mean communication, you're talking about all the communication on the floor to make them better, correct? Uh, yeah. Mostly, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's it's on and off the court, but the off the court it's not an issue at all. It's <laughs> it's the on the court yeah. um, communication that w I mean we. Like last week, I, we didn't communicate, and that's one of the reasons we had so many turnovers. We weren't communicating our cuts. We weren't communicating coming back. We weren't communicating who's open, where to pass all. It doesn't necessarily mean verbalizing, pointing, directing. Um, we still have some people that aren't executing plays right. They need to communicate through the offense mm -hmm. what they're doing and, and help each other out because it is a team sport, and they need to help each other in that way. And they know that. It's just actually doing it. All right, well, let me ask you before we talk about Anderson coming up on Saturday from – a philosophy standpoint, and I'm kind of maybe mixing this in with the communication side of it, if some of the players, I kind of relate this to scoring, if, if a player is not used to scoring and then all of a sudden you ask them to score, how difficult is that? Maybe some of the players have not been communicators of their entire career and now they have to be because you're playing at the collegiate level. How difficult is that for you to try to get that out of them? Because apparently it must be in some respects, right? Yeah, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Like, what's the I have no but idea. No, and it's, it's very true. There's a lot of, you go to high school games, it's very quiet. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a point of emphasis at that level. Um, AAU is even pretty quiet. Um, and communication is also, like I said, not just on the court, but off the court. I do think our bench does a good job. They are very lively, and I ask that of them as well, and that's communication just as much as on the court. Um, and and you're right, and I, that's what I'm still trying to figure out. How do you, if they've never been verbal to this point, how you do it? And I try to self-reflect, because I can't say I was the most verbal high school player either, mm. but that had to change in college. It was, you know, you got to or yeah. no. Um, I, I still think the depth's not there. I can't say if you don't do your job, next man up. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where the program has to get to um, in order to hold people more accountable and uh, realistically accountable. You don't do your job, you know, and yeah. I got somebody else in the waiting to come yeah. in. But when we're out recruiting right now, I mean, that's one of the key things. I mean, all summer, uh, um, Coach Miller and I checked off, did it communicate? If yeah. they do that, that's a big burden that I don't have to deal with once they get here because they're going to be communicating. And then they're usually more natural le leaders if they're communicating. You bet. How do they handle pressure then? I mean, is it uh, – I guess I'm kind of thinking about just going to Earlham College and succeeding academically. There's a lot of pressure behind that because it is a high academic standard. I would think pressure would be nothing to most of these players, right? I don't – you would think. <laughs> uh, and right now, I'm not making excuses by any means. And I had the conversation with, I mean, the finals is coming up. It sucks because our season falls right in the probably most stressful time of the year. Yeah. Um, so there is a lot of pressure I got on them about taking care of themselves. I do see a lot of wear and tear right now. I'm like, are you sleeping? And they're telling me they're going to bed at 3 in the morning. Uh -oh. Well, you're not going to be successful in anything. I said, you're not going to be successful, period. You're not going to be successful academically, athletically, or socially if you're not healthy and taking care of yourself so yeah. I'm trying to get on about that but again I, as a coach I can only do so much I can't yeah. put them to bed at night or do yeah. anything either so that's their responsibility to take care of themselves but uh, I one area I thought they did handle the pressure was Kenyon we were down eight um, with what two or three minutes ago yeah. and obviously took a lead um, so they responded in that situation that's a game situation where they responded and I, and I was pleased and happy to see them 
rise up to that challenge and stuff. But there's been other times I can practice and things that I, I pressure them all the time. Right. And uh, I guess that's why I said we miss our targets a lot. Before, again, we talk about Anderson, did you, maybe you should bring me in and say, this is what happens when you don't take care of yourself. Do you <laughs> think that'd be a good example? Well, you run. I, wa I watch you all. I <laughs> drive around Richmond. You're always running. You're a healthy person. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, but it's more of a cow run. It's not a real run <laughs> okay. anymore. So, again, the, uh, the Quakers will be on the road at Anderson on Saturday. So, conference matchup. Talk about Anderson and what do you expect? Um, watch some film on them. Uh, they're a different ball club. I don't want people, I, I've heard some people like, oh, you, you got, I'm like, no, I know we've swept in the last couple of years. Um, new coach, so there's a little new fire there. Um, some transfers came in, and they actually had a fairly solid freshman class, and their best score right now is a freshman. Um, so they're very athletic from what I could tell in the film to this point. Um, I expect to be a, a good challenge. I don't know if Shelby Shaper's playing or not. She was out the last game, but she's the best returner coming back. And she is super athletic, and I've said she's one of the better players in our conference if she decides to turn it on. Um, so it won't be an easy matchup. Like I said, we're kind of already battling some health issues, mm -hmm. and uh, I lose a player this week to the National Guard, so mm -hmm. I had to make some adjustments on that. And it's not going to be an easy ball game by any means. And you're speaking of uh, Maya Looney, right, where she's going back to the uh, yeah, National she, Guard. So yeah, for and I she I just – she Played well for you, didn't she? Yeah, she had 27 in the last game. She has 27 points gone and the best rebounder right now. Um, so, yeah, that'll be a big void. Um, having to make a lot of tweaks and adjustments. At least I had them in place for St. Mary's Ward that we didn't necessarily use the tweaks and adjustments, but we've been practicing it. So mm. I, I can make that adjustment with the roster and change the system up if I need to this weekend. When will we see you back home again? Uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. We're, we're home both games next week. Okay. And, of course, we'll have those uh, games right here on Radio Troy Digital Sports. want to make sure that you check out Earlham's brand-new website, all the great information that is on there. I know you guys are excited about that. Uh, Mitch has done a great job putting all of that together. So it's a great recruiting tool and a lot of good things happening there too. So Yeah, it's definitely been a big plus for us, and it'll help us. It helps me as a coach even finding everything a little easier. <laughs> there you go. Well, good luck this week, okay? Thank you very much. And, of course, we'll talk with uh, Coach Iden again next week about Anderson and what's coming up uh, in her next few games as well. Thanks for being with us. As always, this has been One on One with Head Coach Janelle Iden.